Well, looks like we have a sequel on our hands, don't we? Yeah, when I initially uploaded my original Pizza Tower video about Pepino, I had no idea that the massive noise update would be coming so soon afterwards, which I imagine has been a pretty major factor to that video's success, which, thank you for that by the way. But of course, with such a massive update being dropped into the game, making the very popular, especially with the devs, character of the noise finally playable, we have a ton of new pixels to get our dirty, cheese-covered hands into. Now, if you want a more in-depth look at the game's art style as a whole, I would highly suggest watching my first video about Pepino, as I talk about a lot of the game's overarching design choices which will give you a better understanding of this video, although I will still bring up those points as we go here. So, with all of that being said, let's not waste any more time as we dive into the pizza tower once again to see how Tor the Pizza worked their magic again with this entertaining, rabid and unhinged yellow guy. Before we get into the sprites proper, of which there are many, why am I doing this to myself again? Let's once again delve into some character analysis to get a read on both the personality of the noise as a whole, and how he compares to our beloved Peppino, to understand how the noise should be contrasting to him, in gameplay and personality. For those of you who have seen my last video, we know that Peppino is meant to be embody a nervous wreck kind of personality, being a poor, unstable and unwilling participant in the games of Pizza Head, as he desperately clings on to hope that he can save his pizzeria. His animations all have this feeling of hesitance and unease to them, showing that Peppino is completely panicked and frantic throughout the whole game. His charm and the reason everyone loves him is because of how feeble the guy is, like a little pet who is nervous after you take him home for the first time. It's it's great to laugh at. Also, his fear and frantic personality fit in with many players' first experience with the game, as the gameplay is very quick and chaotic, meaning that many players are going to feel as overwhelmed as Peppino to start out with, creating a deeper bond between the player and the character. The noise, on the other hand, is almost like the opposite side of the coin, because while Peppino embodies the panicked, nervous side of chaos, the noise represents the violent, hyperactive kind of chaos that involves tearing everything in your way apart. This fits perfectly in the gameplay first off, as the noise is only unlocked after you complete the full playthrough as Peppino. So by the time you're able to play as the noise, you're going to have a pretty good grasp on how to fly through these levels with relative ease. Maybe you've even got a few peer ranks along the way, and have really mastered the game, meaning that you can share the same excited confidence that the noise has in spades. Ever since the early demos of this game, the noise has been characterised as this playful, malicious little sh** that derives the most joy out of tricking people and messing with them. Or, you know, murder and explosives? That too. Either way, this has made him not only one of the favourite characters of the creators of this game, but the fan pace as a whole, as seeing this goblin mess with Peppino throughout the game's history has always been hysterical. Even with the noises changing position within the game as the demos got released, from being the cause of the escape sequences to the third boss of the final game, this appeal never went away, and this boss fight that eventually became the noises home shows off his personality perfectly. The fight really is the best showcase of his personality that we have now, so let's take a look at it to get a full character in sight on him, shall we? The first thing we notice when looking at the fight is that the background is... a TV studio? It seems like a very out of place detail in the context of the rest of the game, but this is actually a really neat way of showing us what kind of character the noise is. He's being shown as an eccentric show-off that loves to make a show for some audience that he may or may not have, trying to entertain us more than any other character in the game really. While Peppino might be there out of obligation to save his business, the noise is just here for a good time, and he's gonna have one, whether you like it or not. This playful attitude is shown further in the many gadgets he uses for his attacks in the fight, such as the skateboard and pogo stick he rides, and the general lack of care he has for his own safety when using them, bumping off the walls with his superman jump or later on his jetpack showing his unhinged version of enjoyment. Then this escalates one step further as he reveals that he isn't just trying to have fun, he's actively messing with Peppino and trying to annoy him, with this massive arsehole vibe being shown in a ton of different ways. For example, his animations for when he's vulnerable to take damage aren't like any other character in the game, as while the other animations show them as actually in danger and off their guard, the noise swings this all the way in the other direction and dares Peppino to come for him, flipping him off, shaking his at him, just doing everything he can to annoy both Peppino and the player into wanting to kick him into the next update. He's a character that's not only gives us a ton of 
enjoyment in watching his playful antics and general goofiness, but he's also the kind of villain that we love to hate, and one that is insanely satisfying to put into his place. And that's the final piece of his characterization that I want to mention. The fact that, once things start to go wrong for the guy, he crumbles like a soggy cookie, and the embarrassment he feels brings a ton of entertainment into the character. There's a ton of animations in his playable state that show off this fall from grace and embarrassment, but his boss fight also has a couple of examples of this. Most notably the ending where he goes from looking utterly unbeatable with this massive minigun, ready to turn Peppino into some Swiss cheese, into a helpless werewolf being dragged along by his beloved Noisette, a high and mighty powerhouse being turned into a cute little guy who loves his partner. How cute. In all seriousness, moments like this are a way to remind the player to not take this character that seriously, much like the rest of the game. Because as much as the noise wants you to get annoyed at him with all of his cockiness and baiting, at the end of the day, he's just a goofy and insanely violent entertainer trying to have a good time, and the player should follow suit, except for the violent part. So, we have a hyperactive, cocky and deranged little guy who wants to put on a show for the player and make the most chaotic and wild experience he can. So how does this tie into him as a playable character instead of a boss? While the noise doesn't quite have the same number of animations that Peppino has stuffed into him, we still have a metric ton of things to sink our teeth into. So let's start with one of the most contrasting themes that the noise has compared to Peppino, that being the near constant smile on his face and the higher emphasis the noise has on his mouth in general. It Sounds like a weird point to start off with, I know, but I think that it's a great way to show the difference between the confidence and personality between the two. While Peppino has a lot of focus on his eyes and the nerves that they portray, the noise always has this massive, gleeful grin on full display. From his jumps, to his ball bounce while he's riding his skateboard, to even a lot of his attack animations, instead of the annoyance and determination that Peppino shows, showing that the noise is very much enjoying tearing the enemies apart. This shows us that the noise is more focused on coming off as confident and as a fun time, unlike Peppino that actively dreads every step he takes. Another dimension to the noise's confidence, especially in his attack animations, is how unhinged and overly exaggerated they can get compared to Peppino. Take this animation for example, where he's carrying things like enemies and bombs, where the noise's mouth is deformed to have these huge sharp teeth like he's a mutant monster, compounded on by the jagged tongue and the red eyes that appear in this, and many similar animations that use these jagged lines for his teeth and hands. These animations make the noise, and the player as an extension, feel way more powerful, as these attacks feel impactful and dangerous, as a result of their feral nature. Like you're somehow able to control a cracked up wild animal who can tear apart anything it wants. The most shining and hilarious example of this is this part at the end of the fake Peppino fight, where instead of this mutant beast being a scary and nerve-wracking conclusion to such an unnerving boss, it's a complete joke, as the noise screams in its face and repels it effortlessly, simply with this mighty roar. This moment and animation is maybe the biggest showcase of the hilarity of the sheer rage of this yellow devil. It's great. Now, the whole aspect of the noise being a cocky and smiling demon tearing through the game, as the player also gains his confidence, is a great example of tying the personality of a character into the gameplay experience. But the violent power of the noise isn't the only way this is done. The speed and bounciness of the noise and how he controls is also a big part of the experience playing him and many of his animations portray this brilliantly. For example, his running animation looks both cartoony and exaggerated, with his mouth once again being the main focus as it's stretched out in that classic cartoon way. But the very few frames and the small differences between them make this animation look more structured than Peppino's fastest run, making his speed look far more controlled. This matches how the player is more likely to be used to the speed of the game by the time they unlock the noise, making the animation fit great with how the player is going to be playing the game by this point as well as further cementing the more confident feel of this character. Something else that adds to the quirkiness and fun factor that the noise brings along is the many unique gadgets and objects that are incorporated into a bunch of his animations, which is one of the best ways that Tour de Pizza has shown the different nature of the noise's gameplay and personality. The most ever-present one, of course, is the skateboard.
skateboard, which immediately tells the player that the movement is going to be radically different from Peppino, who simply ran into everything head first. The use of the skateboard implies that the noise's movement is going to be far more bouncy and trick based, and that assumption would be entirely correct, with moves like the wall bounce instead of the climb, the spin move and so on, making for a far more visually entertaining movement style, perfect for the cocky entertainer kind of character that the noise is. He's also got a ton of one-off objects that he pulls out for specific levels, such as the cup of hot chocolate for Freezer Rater, the whole boxing outfit in golf of all things, and the freaking knife that he pulls out for one grab attack, because of course he'd have one. One very unique way that the noise uses his random assortment of trinkets in this game is his bombs that he uses for all of the boss fights, even replacing the pistol that Peppino would normally use in the Vigilante and Pizza Head fights, making the noise seem far more powerful on his own without the need for a dinky little pistol, unlike this whelp. These bombs, of course, have this iconic noise branding on them, which fits perfectly with the narcissistic TV personality that the noise is, and the fact that the noise is kicking these bombs shows his complete lack of safety. He's gonna mess with these high explosives and have fun doing it, making an entertaining show in the process. The use of these bombs also makes the noise seem way more threatening, as while Peppino was just using regular punches to hit the bosses, or at most a gun, the explosion of the bombs makes his attacks feel way more frantic and energetic, as well as more impactful, making his fights seem faster and more pulse pounding as a result. However, as we talked about earlier, this complete domination and fast paced nature that the noise brings to the game can't last forever. So let's look at the animations that bring the guide back down to earth, the most obvious of which being the hurt animations. In contrast to Peppino's hurt animations, which fit in perfectly with his anxious personality, seeing the noise shocked and off his guard really takes the player out of the flow that the noise allows him to get into with how smooth his moveset and animations come off, making getting hit that much more impactful. This is further emphasised by the fact that quite a few of these hurt animations, or similar animations like running into a wall, break the noise's body significantly in a very cartoony way, like opening his mouth way further than it should, completely pancaking his face into a circle, and so on, making all of these moments where you mess up stand out more, increasing their comedic factor as they happen to such a cocky character. So, so far we've covered the animations that make the noise seem hilariously pathetic when he makes a mistake, some of the stuff that makes him seem like an unhinged wild animal, and his use of these gadgets and objects that give off his vibe as an entertainer. So, what else is there to talk about? Well, for one final major point that I've been occasionally talking about throughout this video, let's talk about how the noise's animations are the perfect parallel to Peppino, and how their differing gameplay styles match perfectly with their opposing personalities. The biggest difference, as I'm sure you've caught on to by now, is how much fun these two seem to be having at any given time, from having tons of fun from the noise, to absolutely zero with Peppino. Take their rage move animation for example, the animation you get when you're walking with a high combo. With Peppino, he's raging, moving around randomly with these crazed eyes, but the noise is able to keep his composure and smugly strut around in a fancy suit. Another example is the boss death animation, where Peppino looks utterly crushed and defeated, while the noise uses it as a comedic moment as he deflates himself like a balloon, looking mildly disappointed at worst. This difference between the two, with the noise never taking anything seriously while Peppino treats everything like life and death, is a really fun way of differentiating the two and their experiences, especially since the gameplay is also going to mirror this. Another big difference between the two that creates contrast between them is the colour schemes of their base form, with Peppino having this very basic and kind of plain black and white chef uniform, while the noise has this very bright and vibrant yellow for his outfit, which paints both of their energies in different lights, with Peppino being very no-nonsense and basic to match the direct feel of many of his animations, while the noise has far more flair across his entire moveset, matching his trickery and playful nature. This difference in colour palette even extends to areas like the transformations, for for example, the ghost form of Peppino is a basic white colour, and is very basic in shape as well, putting more focus on the ghostly element of the power, instead of Peppino himself, whereas the noises version is more unique in shape and appearance, always showing the noises iconic tongue, expression, and yellow colour, cementing the fact that the noise himself is still front and centre here. That segues pretty nicely into the last parts of the noises animations, that being how the transformations differ from Peppino in general, and, as I just mentioned, the majority of them focus less on how they 
they take over Pepino, and how he unwillingly gets dragged along with them, but more on how the noise takes full control of the power-up, and the unique spin he puts on them. The Morse the Chicken transformation is a perfect example of this, as while Pepino is basically controlled by the chicken the whole way through, with no choice in the matter, the noise is very much the one still in control, taking the chicken by the neck and swinging it around as much as he wants, while the poor PS1 mascot struggles. Like I said, the noise is just a tad violent in case you hadn't noticed. Another great example is the rocket, where the noise literally becomes the rocket while eating it, like goddamn Kirby, adding a ton of charm to the power up that contrasts perfectly with Pepino, where he's being flung through the air with barely any control. Near enough, all of these power ups have this feeling of control and confidence from the noise, as well as adapting some of his iconic cheekiness and hyperactiveness, giving all of these powers a completely fresh feel to them, despite many of them not actually being hugely different games gameplay wise. So, to conclude our analysis, it's clear that the noise's artistic direction has once again shown the huge talent of McPig as an animator, as not only has the noise's bouncy, fast-paced and chaotic gameplay and personality been perfectly combined and portrayed in his pixel art, but that flow and satisfaction of watching the animal do his thing has been amazingly shown as well, giving us a truly fresh and unique new experience playing through this game again. It's always going to be a challenge to make an update as greatly anticipated as this for a game as massive as this, live up to the hype especially when it revolves around a character that is so beloved. But it's been such a relief discovering that the high standards that McPick set himself with the base game have been met once again, and that this game's brilliant and unique art remains so good. And there's another video about this game in the books. If you couldn't tell by the combined over half an hour of rambling about this game, this has become one of my favourite games that I've played in recent memory. A very unique opinion, I know, but not only is the art so amazing and iconic now, but the gameplay, which took a while to grow on me, you might be surprised to learn, is so addictive and satisfying once you get a hang of it, which I can't exactly say I've fully done, but hey, I've gotten a couple of P ranks, so I'm on the way, I guess. This game just has a way of keeping you invested, and I'm very sure that this incredible animation style will always be a part of that, even when I stop playing the game. So, with all of that being said, make sure to bite that subscribe button, and as always, I'll see you when I see you. Bye!